Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar organized by JetBrains. I'm Paul Everett, PyCharm Developer Advocate, and I'll be your host. The topic for today's webinar is Effective Data Science with PyCharm. What a hot topic to cover. Our guest is Dan Toffin, data scientist and creator of a very new, meaning good, very new plural site course about PyCharm and data science. Dan, just checking, when did that come out and how's the response been? Hi, Paul. Hi, everyone. First of all, thank you for inviting me to this uh, webinar. My course is about boosting data science productivity with PyCharm, and it came out a month ago. I'm very happy with the responses so far. I think the course really fills the gap between what, what PyCharm can do and what data scientists know about PyCharm. I already that, That's a very good way to put it. Yeah, I already received feedback from some data scientists that the course is really helping them get things done. And as an author, it always feels great to make this kind of positive impact and get such feedback. Indeed. And sometimes on courses like this, you can aim too high, you can aim too low. So it's good to get feedback like that. Yeah. Um, a little bit about Dan. Dan is a senior backend developer for Dimensions, a research data platform hooking up over 140 million research resources. That's a big number. Uh, talking about good timing, we just came out with the new Jupyter Notebook support in 2019.1, re-implemented everything in our Jupyter Notebook support. And Dan had time to get the update into his course, and we really wanted a webinar on this before PyCon, so the stars were aligned. All right, now that we're all set, I'd like to hand the mic over. Welcome, Dan, and thanks a bunch for joining us on this. Thanks, Paul. So I'll start with the motivation for the topic of boosting data science productivity with PyCharm. Uh, does anyone care about this topic? Is it even possible to do it? And there are some points about it. As a fact, there is growing interest out there in data science. It's becoming a more uh, popular topic uh, with each year. Also, as a fact, Python grows in popularity and Python is used a lot in data science. In my opinion, and I'm sure there are more people who agree, uh, PyCharm is the best integrated development environment for Python. If you agree with this statement, then please write yes or hell yes in the questions pane. The problem is that from my observations, PyCharm tends to be underused in practice. Under the pressure of time, deadlines and priorities, it's so easy to get comfy with a set of features and just stick uh, with them. Once I discussed with a data scientist about uh, PyCharm and he told me that, uh, yes, I'm using it. I know it can do a lot of things, but I only use a handful uh, of features. So what can we do about this? Uh, when it comes uh, to productivity, we all want some more of that. I think that other than getting a good sleep, there is no single thing that you can do to increase productivity. Instead, productivity is a game of death by a thousand cuts. Waste a bit of time here with some import statements, waste a little time over there with the syntax of some library you haven't used for a while, and the day is gone. Then you become too busy to sharpen your skills and make the most out of the tools at your disposal. Now, according to some, Preparing data is a huge part of data scientists' work, even without the complaining part. PyCharm has some great features to help data scientists work with data. Here is the plan for the rest of the, my presentation. So I will give an overview and short demos of three data-related uh, PyCharm features, scientific mode, Jupyter support, and database support. Let's switch to PyCharm. Hey, Dan, if you could, could yes. you bring up at some point during the uh, webinar the, your page for the Pluralsight course? Um, we got asked a question, what's the URL and information about it? OK. Uh, OK, I will uh, leave this for the end of the OK, that's fine. Of, of the talk. OK. So let's start with uh, the scientific mode. The scientific mode is a set of features for making PyCharm friendlier for working uh, with data. So I will start with some really, really basic code. So the, the classic 
uh, hello world and I'll print it on one line hello second line world and you know just running this is uh, is something very very uh, something very basic we can just get the hello world uh, message so nothing uh, nothing extraordinary here but look what happens when we are adding this to some of the lines so once we add this and go here to view scientific mode uh, we get the documentation uh, window here which i prefer to keep as a pop-up and we have these green triangles uh, in the gutter now hovering on them we see execute cell in console so basically we moved from an ordinary python uh, file to executing pieces from this file as cells so just hitting uh, the the green arrow uh, this line is executing also with control enter uh, the next line is executing so now if we switch if we turn off the scientific mode then this becomes back just an ordinary uh, python file okay next here i have a data folder and uh, i have the titanic.csv uh, file which is basically a classic data set uh, with data about uh, passengers on uh, titanic including those who uh, including those who survived and what i'm going to do is to write a bit of code in the scientific mode uh, using these cells to read uh, to read from this file and uh, display some, uh, some make some plots with it okay so i will import pandas and now read the csv notice how while typing we already have the documentation i will adjust a bit the font size and now we need to indicate the path to uh, to the titanic file and i'm going to I prefer to have uh, operating system independent way, so not using a hard-coded value, but uh, using path. So path is a new module, I think, in uh, Python 3.3 or 3.4. It's in the path lib. It's automatically imported. And here is a nice feature that I really like about the scientific mode. Now, typically, you expect to execute a cell, right? But what if i want to execute just a tiny piece of the cell not the full cell because i'm not ready to execute the full thing i only want to execute this selection and with pycharm i can uh, there is a shortcut for it execute selection in console alt shift e and okay i get an error that's because i first need to run this statement and afterwards uh, do the selection again and it basically tells me that hey you're in the current uh, directory. From here, I can join path and go to uh, the data folder and then to titanic.csv. Now, I'm going to run this. And uh, yes, the data was the data, the data was loaded. So I'm going to assign a variable to this so let's say titanic uh, data frame i like to reformat the file once in a while and i can execute again this cell and here i get this view with the variables and i see the titanic data frame uh, and i have the option to view it as a date as data frame clicking here is displaying is showing the scientific view the scientific view is uh, quite interesting because it allows us to see uh, data and plots two items which are very interesting uh, to data scientists uh, paul are there any questions so far no not yet um, one thing to point out to people uh, some people are expecting this part to be um, jupiter oriented and you'll get to our new jupiter support Definitely. later you're showing yeah. kind of the scientific mode, which is how to do data science uh, kind of in a real IDE kind of way. Yeah, 
yeah and from here we'll transition to we'll transition to jupiter yep thanks okay so that's so we loaded the titanic uh, data frame and note that uh, okay here in data i can see the data frame but i can also do more things so i'm going to uh, let's say i want to get a sample of this uh, of this data and from titanic data frame i'm going to pick up a sample of 10 of 10 items so executing this a, a variable sample titanic is created here and i can also view it as as a data frame now here is an interesting thing if i rerun this cell the data in the scientific view is automatically uh, updated so note that we have some passenger ids here executing this cell again is going to update uh, the data we're getting a couple of questions about what key sequence you're using to do that update oh great question so control enter so this is equivalent to uh, to executing the cell in console and also something which is uh, easily transferable to Jupyter. We'll see that immediately. Oh, very good. Thank you. OK, welcome. And I still have access to, to uh, the old data. So that's basically this allows uh, this allows us to look at uh, uh, to look at uh, uh, data. These are data frames, but we can also uh, see some. Uh, for example, if I'm taking the Titanic data frame and I want to see how many null values I have there. So I hit again uh, some, I hit again control enter. And I expect this to be available here. There it is, it's a series. And I get uh, the sum of, of null values for each, uh, for, for each column. We can see, for example, at age, we have a few with cabin and so on. Also note that there there is this uh, there are these uh, uh, color differences basic which are quite helpful when you, you want to have a when you want to get the big picture you can see here how the uh, the background color varies with uh, with the value that's a nice it's a nice touch and between these there are also shortcuts to navigate between these so alt uh, left key and alt right key allows us to easily switch between them okay so these this is what uh, this is part of the scientific view what we see in in data but we can also uh, use plots and let's and let's do that let's try to plot some things so i'm going to import seaborn as sns then from matplotlib uh, i want to uh, matplotlib pyplot i want to import uh, so from matplotlib import pyplot as plt and now i want to do a count plot to look at uh, i want to look at survivors so those who survived uh, So looking at, at their sex, so males or females, and using the Titanic data frame. So I'm going and show this, plt dot show. I'll hit control enter to execute this cell. Fingers crossed. And it works. So uh, here we can see uh, on the left side, so those who didn't survive, they have zero, and those who survived, one. Uh, so uh, we notice that there are a lot of, of males who, who didn't survive. Uh, and that's, let's say, this is part of the initial uh, data exploration. Now we can also uh, do another one. So I'll make a new cell and try out i want a count plot uh, also to look at those who survived but based on uh, based on the passenger class also with the titanic uh, data frame 
and show this. So I'll hit Control Enter again. And here we see uh, some more uh, on, the, on the distribution of these. So those who were in the third passenger class uh, had a lower chance of, of surviving. Note that uh, this plot appears, however, the old plot is still available. And uh, we can also navigate easily between them with Alt, uh, Left, and Right arrows. So th that can be quite handy instead of saving plots to, 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 to a file and then opening files, opening those files, we can easily navigate between these from within uh, PyCharm. This can be quite a, a handy feature. Now, remember that IDE, that PyCharm is, has a lot of other features. For example, uh, the ability to refactor code. If we look at, if we look at this code, we note that uh, actually, it's quite uh, re uh, there is quite a bit of duplication here. So the code to to show the those who survived based on on a sex and a passenger class. So what we can do is to simply extract uh, this code into uh, into a separate uh, a function. So extracting a method, Control Alt M. I'll uh, just call it uh, count plot. Oh, no, oh, wait, I'll just, now I'll use these, so Control Alt M, count plot. Okay, and it basically, it created automatically this, uh, this function. So put it this way, of course you can create it uh, as well manually. However, having the IDE do it for you, uh, to me it's quite a handy feature. And once you start using the extract method in your code, then uh, it, it's, it gets really handy and uh, it's quite useful. And this is especially useful when you are working with cells because you want to do the experimentation, you want to try things out, but once you have something that you want to, to keep and you're confident that it works, it's a good idea to move that thing uh, away, to extract it to some separate uh, file, some separate uh, module. And let's do this, uh, let's show how to do this here. So I can take the, the survived and hit Control Alt P, that's going to extract it as, as a parameter. So in this case, uh, I just called it X and the same here, Control Alt P. And I is going to call it hue and then the uh, data parameter as well. I'll just call it data. And okay, I'm going to remove the default uh, parameters And now if I'm uh, running uh, this again, so I'll just, with, the, with those same parameters, I expect to get, expect to get the same, uh, the, the same uh, plot. And now of course I can also uh, delete this and replace it with, uh, with the function that I just created. So survived based on passenger class using the Titanic uh, data frame. And again, I can easily navigate between, uh, between, uh, uh, these, uh, between these plots and even delete some of them if I want to. So Paul, do we have uh, more questions? We do, we have quite a number of pretty good questions. First, good job on telling everybody to post hell yes because my first 20 questions were putting a smiley face about that um the uh as a point um we're getting a couple of questions about run all and it's something we know we need to do and there's a ticket for it okay um there's a question about how to enable and disable scientific mode specifically can you do it from the keyboard there is it's called an action for it, and you can do it from the keyboard using find actions, and you can bind it to a key map uh, of your own. We don't have a default key sequence for it. 
Now, on to the question that is uh, half of the questions so far. Are you going to put any of these files in a repo and announce the URL? Yeah, definitely. So everyone should, uh, are, is that going to be put on here or announced later? Uh, later at the end of, um, at the end, I'm going to basically put it on GitHub. Got the it. code right. is going to be very basic. So this is really about PyCharm, not, uh, not the code itself. Yeah. So if everyone could watch out for the blog post announcing the recording, we'll make sure it gets it uh, into there. Um, there was a question about, is there a shortcut for inserting a cell below? Uh, there isn't a shortcut. Again, there's like actions and stuff, but we've got a challenge with trying to preserve Jupyter oriented key bindings versus our IDE or any key bind. We know it's something we need to work out. There was a question that you can handle if you could. Um, uh, I, I was answering questions and didn't notice the spot in the presentation. What is the format input box in scientific view? Oh, um, so here, so this is the format box, so we can go to some. And here, um, I haven't uh, used this, um, just notice you played a bit around with it. Uh, as far as, so you can put, I might be wrong on this, so uh, something like this, and it should, yeah, it, it allows to, to put some formatting on, on some of the data, but I haven't I haven't tried it out. Okay. Uh, do you know of uh, anything in PyCharm, if not, I can ask the team who's watching in the background, that helps with log transformation when zero or a negative value is present? Do you want me to repeat that? Uh, please. Um, something that helps with log transformation when zero or a negative value is present. You want me to hand that to the team? Um, okay, yes, please. Okay, so continue. Okay, so next I'm going to move to, to Jupyter support. So something to mention here, so Jupyter support in PyCharm is a complete rewrite of the old uh, Jupyter support. Uh, the new uh, Jupyter support provides extra value compared to just using, uh, using the browser. And to me, the killer feature is the ability to debug cells. Uh, which couldn't be done with the old uh, Jupyter support. And as far as I know, it's not working uh, uh, out of the box uh, with the browser. So let's see this uh, Let's see this in action. I'm going to make this smaller and create a new uh, Jupyter notebook. I'm just going to call it uh, demo. And here is, the, this is what we get. Uh, note here, uh, this big question mark, which is quite handy. Uh, it's basically the quick list with the shortcuts to uh, that can be used uh, with the Jupyter. So run the cell, run and select below. This one, which I really like, the debug cell, inserting cells and, and, and so on. Uh, here on the right side, there are these three buttons. This allows us to switch, uh, to switch views. So here is sort of a split view. Your code is on the left, the output is on the right. This is output only and this is code only. So I'm going to use the split view so that we can see uh, results uh, immediately. Okay, I'll start with just the classic hello and hit control enter. Okay, and it's starting, fingers crossed. It's executing, hello, and we have some output. One of the nice features is that uh, it automatically starts uh, the Jupyter server. So I just created a, a blank file. I wrote one very basic line and it started the Jupyter uh, server for me. This is a nice touch, it's, it's quite convenient. Also, I can see here uh, the various variables. Uh, in this variable view, I can see the various Jupyter variables. Okay, remember this is the scientific mode in which uh, we wrote these cells. Uh, what if we actually take uh, this code and paste it here in the Jupyter 
uh, notebook, what's going to happen. And this is an, I, I like what, what it's doing. It's interpreting this, uh, this string as a cell separator and I can already uh, run things. So I'm going to hit control enter. So this is, okay. Now let me also put here the Titanic DF so that I can see some output. Okay, and here is basically the Titanic data frame. I switch to uh, the output view to uh, have a, a larger uh, a larger display. And this is quite similar with the experience you would expect when working with uh, the Jupyter notebook. Now we can run each of these each of these cells. Clicking here, we also get the option to debug a cell. Again, here we can see the uh, we can see the the shortcuts. So Shift Enter, it's moving to the next one. Shift Enter to the next, to the next, to the next. Now. The good news is that we also get those, uh, we also get the uh, the plot. Okay. Now, what I'm going to try out is to actually put a breakpoint here and start uh, Jupiter in uh, debug mode. So debug cell. Notice that it stopped here. Now I'll use F7 to step into count plot. Okay, and I have some debugger skip cell. It was not executed under debugger. Okay, I will stop the debugger. Probably I missed something. Put a breakpoint here and try again from this cell. Okay, it's still doing something. Okay, and now it basically stepped inside the count plot uh, function. And I get access to the debugger and I can even change some of the, the variables here. So let's say I replace this with passenger class. Doing that will uh, basically generate the other uh, the other plot a resume execution and note that it actually display the uh, the plot with the passenger class although i ran it with survived and uh, based on sex okay paul any questions so far okay one that we have is about um Interactive visualization, I'll handle that one. Uh, at the moment, we don't have JavaScript turned on in the panel on the right that's doing the visualization because we need to make sure we get the security model on it right. One of the interesting things that we're doing with our new Jupyter support is we're operating on the files directly, not going through the Jupyter server for everything. There's no export and import of your notebook files and we use the uh, right hand pane for doing some things with rendering. That view needs to have a JavaScript sandbox hooked up to it. We have a ticket for talking about that. Okay. Um, and then the next one, I was gonna type in an answer, but I thought I'd give you a chance. Um, what is the point of our Jupyter Notebook support in PyCharm since we already have the IPython thing that you could do at the bottom? So if you could talk a little bit about what you and I had talked about in the interview, the workflow of having an IDE view of your notebook. Okay, so uh, of course we can, uh, we have also in scientific view, we, we have, we can use the IPython console, which is quite uh, uh, handy. However, uh, keep in mind that Jupyter uh, notebooks have, are hugely popular. So a lot of people are, are using them. However, then the question is not about should I use them, it's more the question, okay, what is the extra added value that PyCharm uh, brings uh, to Jupyter Notebook? So why would I run these in uh, PyCharm instead of running it uh, in the browser? Uh, 
And to me, the key differentiator is uh, is the debugger. But also keep in mind that uh, this is uh, pretty much uh, an initial release of, of the support and it already looks great. Uh, I'm confident that uh, uh, the JetBrain guys are working hard to, to put even more awesome features into it. I, if I remember correctly, uh, the debugger only works with a local server, not with remote servers. Yes, in not fact, yet. I was just answering a question about that. And thanks for bringing that up. We are still in the start of this, not the end of this. And we have a yes. lot of plans and tickets that we're already tracking for things like run all and also remote notebooks. That is very high on our priority list. OK, that's good to hear. Also, for me, one of the little features I would like is just that as I have here in the scientific mode, I can execute a little piece of code. Uh, currently in a uh, Jupyter notebook is not in the current support. This is not yet possible. I guess this is also one of the features to be uh, to be implemented, most likely, hopefully. So this is what I'm referring to. So if I select a piece of code, Alt Shift E, it's not uh, running yet. Okay. Uh, Next, the next and the final feature that I'm going to talk about is the database uh, support. Uh, in my opinion, database support in, in PyCharm is, is very mature. Actually, uh, as far as I understand, uh, database, the database uh, plugin is uh, also a product on its own, something called a data grip. And all of that is included uh, in the PyCharm, actually only in the PyCharm Professional Edition but it's, it's pretty much an awesome feature. Here I have an SQLite database, and I'm just going to double click on it. I get the, the database view. Uh, it, already opened, it already opened the SQLite database, but keep in mind that uh, PyCharm can access a lot of other data sources. So you see a long list of uh, databases that are supported. And here is what uh, this can do so if I'm if I'm selecting if I'm selecting these tables without SQLite master I don't care about that uh, a nice feature is the ability to uh, generate some di a diagram with it and this is very handy when working uh, if you're working with a database and you're not familiar with a schema uh, this provides a rich visual uh, overview to it. So you can see uh, the tables and also you can see the relationships, which are the primary keys, which are the foreign keys and so on. So see albums and how uh, the track table has this album ID foreign key over there. So this is quite, uh, quite useful. So on a table, if I hit F4, I also get uh, I get this view of it, over it. I can also uh, modify it. Uh, however, I would also like to go to uh, to the console. This allows me to write SQL queries. So let's say select. Say I want to select from the album table. Uh, I typically tend to put always some limit to a statement because if you are querying a a database and you have a table with millions of rows, you don't want to, to retrieve everything from it. And there is quite a similarity with what we saw in scientific mode and what we saw with uh, Jupyter. So hitting control enter on uh, on a statement is actually going to run uh, this statement. So there is, there is some consistency uh, over there. Now, that was some auto completion that we saw, uh, but it also can do more smart stuff. So when joining, it one nice thing, it already gives some suggestions on which table it can join. So this is infer this is inferred based on those uh, foreign keys. So in this case, I can easily join with uh, with a track table. Again, limit it to only a few. Hitting Control Enter, I get a select which which statement to run, and I get a lot of a lot of columns. Now, track has an alias, uh, T album doesn't. So hitting Alt Enter gives me the option to introduce an alias. So I will just use the uh, suggested A. 
and let's say I want to select fewer columns. So from A, I would like to get the album title and uh, the name of, of the track. So running this gives me uh, titles and, and names. So this is the kind of functionality I would expect from, uh, from, a, mature, uh, data, from a mature database support. But it would, it wouldn't it be really nice that something like this would also be available uh, in in the other uh, with the other features for example in uh, Jupyter notebook let's say I want to uh, actually run some uh, some query so I'll import SQLite I'll uh, trying to get a, a connection to it so I'll connect uh, again path uh, join path with data and Chinook.SQLite. Uh, let's see if this works. Okay, I get some error. Okay, probably here I need to uh, make it a string. I'll run it again. Okay, so no errors uh, at the moment. And now I want to use uh, from pandas. So read SQL. And here I'm going to write the SQL query. So let's say I select, but note that there is no, no auto completion here. So I'll just say select star from, from uh, album. But I, that's, not, uh, that's not quite nice, right? I mean, it's an ID we want to have uh, some sort of uh, auto completion. So I'll hit Alt Enter and inject language. And here, SQLite. And somehow, now when I hit Control Enter, it gets auto completion. So note that it made the, the, the connection with it. It understood that, hey, I already opened this database and I can already give you some uh, suggestions. Not only that, but I actually get uh, what we also saw, uh, what we also just saw previously, with the ability to uh, to get uh, auto completion and uh, suggestions for joins. So I'll just use the same uh, the same query, and I'll run this. Switch to uh, to the full output view, and note that. It's basically returning the results of the query. That's that's uh, to me that's a really nice feature to have this sort of integration. So I could write a SQL query, and I had those auto completion features available inside uh, the Jupyter notebook. Paul, any questions? Okay, perfect timing. Um... Let's see. Uh, first, uh, the, there's a question about can you specify markdown cells? I was too busy to answering questions to watch during that segment. Did you make some markdown cells? Uh, no, but I think it's something like this, MD. Yeah, I think already something happened here, but I will try on a new cell. So this MD uh, and type here. Yeah, it seems to. Yep. Uh, let's see. Um, there's a question about Impala support. I'll answer that to see if our database supports it. Uh, someone asked if you could show the database view again because it went pretty quickly. Okay, so view, I'll activate it, tool windows, database. And here it is. And could you open up uh, one of the tables and show browsing yeah. it? Uh, so let's say artist. I just clicked on artist and I already uh, get the a query on it. So yeah. note this is a drop down and I can see hey, his artist ID. There's a primary key on it. This is the field. The same invoice. This one has more columns. And for uh, other people, just to give a little bit more explanation, this is PyCharm Professional Bundles Data Grip, as you mentioned. And Data Grip is a very fully featured um, IDE for SQL development. 
So it's focused on SQL, not any database possible. And so you can do things like write your queries up here. You can edit values in line. You can look at the analyze of your data. You can connect to multiple databases simultaneously and drag and drop stuff between them. So it's a pretty fully featured uh, database tool. Yep. Um, two questions related to this. Uh, as far as the plugins for the database and how to make a connection, could you click in the database tool? Could you click on, on the plus and just show, don't actually connect like Postgres or something. Okay, so if we we can try Postgres, basically what we need is is uh, what we expect in typical uh, connection string. So put the host, user password, uh, test the connection. Most likely you also have this option to, to download missing drivers. Uh, I guess that's sort of a licensing thing that's not included out of the box. But that's just a matter of hitting a download and bang, the, the drivers are downloaded. Right, and there are things to do with SSH and connecting through a Bastion jump server and stuff like that. Uh, so it's it's matured a lot over the years and it covers a whole bunch of the little features that a whole bunch of edge cases cover, but very powerful and useful tool. And not only is it great as a database tool, but once you connect your project in PyCharm in the IDE, when you connect it to a data source, you then get language completion inside your Python and you can say this string is a SQL, SQL string. And you will get autocomplete syntax highlighting of SQL inside that Python file. Not only that, you'll get autocomplete on your database tables and columns. So you'll get schema aware completion for your project. Uh, it's a pretty freaky thing, but it is incredibly productive and useful combining your database development with your Python development. Yes, uh, note that this in, in the code, this was done, so hitting Alt Enter, uh, this part of inject language. So I, it started as an ordinary string, but as soon as I injected a uh, language, this is uh, how it started to become aware of, of the database connection. Let's see, and we got an answer to a, a question about, um, about running with very large output that I will reply. I apologize, there's quite a number of unanswered questions. Uh, there were three times more questions on this than there usually are, which is very good news. We will get back and answer all of them when we can. Um, but we'll head back to you, uh, Dan, if you want to do the wrap up and show maybe the course and talk a little bit more about what's happening in your Pluralsight course. Uh, sure. So if I would just go to Pluralsight, uh, this, is, uh, this is basically uh, the course. Uh, these are the uh, the modules of uh, and the actual clips from the course with all the topics that are covered. I'll uh, add this to uh, the link over here. And basically, the takeaways from from this presentation. So keep in mind these three uh, core features of PyCharm, which are highly relevant for data scientists: the scientific mode, uh, Jupyter support, database support. Uh, these three are the nice thing is not only they are working by themselves, but they also uh, work with each other. And if you want to learn more things, uh, well, please check the course. There you go. All right, great. Uh, that was fantastic. Thanks, Dan, for taking the time to talk with us about Pine Charm and Data Science and your course and getting us really situated on scientific view and then the new Jupyter support. And thanks a lot for going extra time on the database view. It's an underappreciated part of PyCharm as the many, many, many questions and comments uh, in the questions panel showed. If any of you have any questions later, please don't hesitate to reach out to us by email or social media. If you would like to get more information on PyCharm, just go to our website at jetbrains.com slash PyCharm. We'd love your feedback on this webinar, so please feel free to contact us on Twitter. I'm the one that will answer you, 
or in the after webinar survey. We actually look at those surveys. They are very useful for us. So if you have any input, please let us know. The recording will be made available on our YouTube channel soon. Uh, watch out for that on our PyCharm blog where you can find up-to-date PyCharm news and educational resources. So for example, the recording of Dan published there in a couple of days. We'll also provide some additional links and information from the presentation on the blog, including the repo that uh, Dan will push his information into. And hey, if you're going to PyCon, come see us. We have a booth that we're doing wonderful things in, really packed with uh, presentations and information and other people in the Python community. That's all from us today. Thank you very much for joining us and hope you have a nice day.